In this video we're going to tackle the crypt program that I gave you in the lab. This is a program written in C that if we run it, tells us its usage is to type the name of the program, followed by a secret password, followed by the file name. Well, I've given you a file called mytext.crypt. There it is. And if we run it through a hex dump or a hex editor, this one's called HD, it gives us the contents of the file and you can see the contents of the file are just gobbledygook. So the program presumably decrypts this. Um, there's a password that we need to type in as well. So let's load the program up in the IDA debugger. Now down the left hand side here we've got all the functions. Because this is a C program, we've got lots of functions which look pretty useless. Um, all the purple stuff are library functions. They, they're not part of our program, they do sort of extra stuff. And all these functions beginning with underscores are extra sort of functionality added by the C compiler. So we can ignore most of them. The one we're really interested in, the function that begins with main. This is where our program actually starts. So we can see if we look at our graph view down the left hand side here, this gives us the outline for how the main function actually runs. And we can see that as soon as the program starts, it takes a choice. Based on some condition, we either go down this bit on the right hand side or this bit down the left hand side. This bit on the right hand side does something with Johnny, this code here. You'll recognize if you see it fairly often, it's some sort of string operation. It might be a string length calculation, it might be a string comparison, anything like those. That. And then based on the result of that comparison or string length operation, it will call a function called decrypt with a file name. Um, if either of those fail, then it goes to the end of the program. Now, the first question is we need to get this first option here to match. Well, Ida's quite helpfully named this, or put some names in this very first compare for us. It says the thing that we're comparing is actually called arg underscore zero, and that's the number of parameters that were passed to the program. So in this case, we've got the program name, the secret password, and the file to be decrypted. So it requires there to be the program name followed by two parameters, otherwise it won't decrypt the file. Um, if we haven't got exactly three, then it prints out how to use the program and then closes. So let's assume we get those two right and I'm going to put them in here under the process options. So the secret password first, in this case it's Johnny. A good guess will tell you that without looking at any of the instructions. This does some sort of comparison with one of the arguments. You'll see there it's doing a comparison with arg4. Um, so just a good guess here rather than looking at all the instructions. You can go through them if you wish. So let's assume the password is called Johnny followed by the file that we want to decrypt which is mytext.crypt. So that's the parameters to our program set up and we're going to stop it on this line here. So we're going to run the program through to that point there. So we've got the stack for our program, all our registers and the sort of hex dump of any area of memory we choose to look at. So this bit of code here sets up the decryption of the program. Well, Ida's kind of figured out what some of the parameters are to this decrypt function. It's telling you that a file name is going to be loaded onto the stack from the EAX register. The ESP register points to the stack, and then we're going to call the decrypt function. Well, because this file name is going onto the stack, and then we're doing a call, we can tell that the file name is a parameter to the decrypt function. If you're not sure, then look at the top here. If we hover over this, I'm not quite sure what that is, but it gives us a memory address, BFF0C. And it says, let's look at that memory address. So BFF0C, and let's just go forward now. So now that address is in the AX register. And we're going to look in the memory dump here. BFF0C304. And this is the point we get to. Now you can see it doesn't, make, it doesn't resolve to any text of any kind. But you see it's along the same sort of lines. It's BF something. BF, well this was a memory address. This appears to be a Remember the bytes here in reverse order. So we've got BF again. Well, now we add 8 to this memory address. So we're going to move along 4 to this point here. And then we've got another BFF address. So let's do it. Add 8 to that memory address. That takes us to 30C, which is this point here. So we're now looking at these four bytes here. And we're going to move the contents of those bytes into the AX register. So these four bytes are going to go into the AX register. There they are and then we're going to load those four bytes into the stack register. Well, that's a memory address, so let's go and look at that. So, go BFF0C59E. 
and it's this line here and you can see it's the file name so that's what we're passing to our function we're going to load that onto the stack now or rather the address of this string goes onto the stack and then we run the decrypt function so let's step into it step into the decrypt function now I'm just going to re-change this into graph view so we can actually see the flow for the, this particular function and what it does so we've got something here this is the prologue to the function just as the stack setup etc and then we call a function called fopen if you look at the manual page on the console you see fopen opens a file and it expects two parameters the mode i.e. is it in read or write and the file name and you can see here right before the call is a file name and the mode being loaded onto the stack in the right to left order so the mode is going on first followed by the file name the file name is the first parameter mode is the second parameter so let's step through this so it's opening the file when fopen returns the result is in the ax register this is just the file pointer it's a special number the linux kernel has given us that refers to the file so we need to store that somewhere now i just quite nicely for, for us pointed out that there appears to be some variables in this function and one of them is called stream and they're offset from the EBP register but we don't need to worry about that we just need to know that stream is a variable that's part of this function and we're going to load into the stream variable the file pointer or the file stream so so then and then we're going to compare the stream number with zero well if you look at the f open function it returns zero if it couldn't open the file and if it is zero it goes down this route here oh no sorry it goes down the green route down here if it's true and the green route takes it down here that does nothing down and exits the function. So if we can't open the function, open the file, the function just finishes. So let's assume we can open the file. Jump. We've now got a variable that we load zero into this. So this zero is going into variable A. And then it goes through to this bit here. We run a function called FEOF. If you look up the man page for that, it checks whether we're at the end of the file. And it takes one parameter, which is the stream. So are we at the end of that file that we just opened? If we are, close the file and finish the function. If we're not at the end, then do this stuff on the right here. So let's get to that point. Test if we're at the end of the file. Nope. Jump to the right here. So now we call a function called fgetc. That loads the stream onto the stack. Calls that fgetc. Now EAX now contains the result. Now the EAX register contains the result of the fgetc function. And if you look at the man page again for fgetc, you'll see it returns the character from the file. So it gets one character at a time from the file and returns the value in the EAX register. And if you look at the EAX register, you can see its character, well, rather the ASCII value for the character is 43 in hex. So then let's watch that 43. That 43 is going to go into the EDX register. There it is. And then we're going to move whatever is in this memory address here. So let's go to it, shall we? Let's. So that memory address is BFF0C23E. BFF0C23E. This is the address we're talking about. So we're going to move the contents of that address there into EAX. So the EAX register now contains zero. That's the zero from there. And then we're going to XOR the contents of EAX with that character earlier, 43, and then store the result in the EAX register. Well, if you XOR anything with a zero, you get the same thing you put in. So in this case, it hasn't changed that character at all. We're then going to put the result of that operation that's currently stored in the AR register back into memory at VAR9. So let's step over that. And you'll see there it is, that's where var 9 is, it's 43, it's gone there, we've stored it in memory. We're then going to add 1 to var a, that's that register there, or that value there, so we add 1 to that. And then we move var 9, which is the character, into the EAX register again. It's a bit round robin. And then we're going to put EAX onto the stack to call the put char function. So we're going to send that character to the function to display it on the screen. Now, a couple of things you may have noticed. Var a at the beginning of the loop is set to zero, and in the loop we add one to it. So it's clearly a counter of some time, some kind. So let's rename it counter. 
Now the extra thing to notice is here when we call the putchar function, the thing that goes on the on the uh, the stack to call the putchar, the one parameter that goes to the putchar function is whatever is in var nine. So var nine goes into eax, and then eax goes onto the stack, and then we call it. So var nine is clearly the character which gets printed out. So let's rename that as the character, and let's run through our loop one more time. See what's happening. So I'll wait the end of the file. Check the result. No, we're not at the end of the file. Now call fgetc, set up the parameters for fgetc. Here's the character we've got out, so it's 6e. This is the next character out of the file. It's going to go from the eax register into the edx register. We're then going to move the counter, in this case it's 0, 01, from memory into the eax register. There's the 0, 01. And then we're going to XOR the character, which is in the edx register with our counter, which is in the EAX register, and then we're going to store the result in EAX. So here the counter is being XORed with the character from the file, and then the result is being stored in the EAX register. So step over that, there's the character. We're then going to store the character back in memory, i.e. the EAX register, or the lower part of it is going to go back into memory. There it is. We're then going to add one to our counter, two, and then we're going to move our character back onto the stack to call put char to print it out. So clearly, this XOR here is doing the decryption. So let's keep going through. Step, step, call put char. Again, are we at the end of the file? No, we're not. So we jump over here. We call F get C to get the next character from the file. And the result goes into EAX. Here, the character is 6C. That goes into the EDX register. So they've both got 6C. We move the counter into the EAX register, so that's going to get the number 2, there's the counter. We XOR the counter with the byte we got from the file. The result is 6E. And then we store the result back in memory at this location there, there it is. We add 1 to our counter, 3. And then we move our character back onto the stack to call put char to print it out. So clearly the program here is just going through the file, it's counting for each byte one at, one at a time, and it's XORing our counter with the byte to get the decrypted data.